humans and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different than my typical rant comedy. I don't know if any of you guys have noticed, but right back there I have this thing. Basically, one day I got really bored and so I decided to go to Michael's and got some spray paint and a canvas and I spray painted a thing. Besides it turning out super super emo, I think it looks pretty good. But right now, I'm on spring break. And while being on spring break is really fun, when you get to the second weekend, you run out of things to do. So, I decided, let's make another. However, opposed to last time where I just got some spray paint and spray painted a canvas and went, let's see what happens. Though that did turn out well, I want to do a little bit more structure in it. I present to you the five steps of probably spray painting something. Number one, inspiration. Number two, testing. Number three, drafting. Number four, the store. Finally, number five, doing the dang thing. Some of the inspiration I had for the piece I created was first of all, this piece with the moon here. I really like the technique used to create the circle. I enjoyed the layers on this and how the solid colors created a great effect. I liked how all the different techniques put together created a cool piece on this. I just liked octopuses, that's all I really have to say for this one. I thought this piece was stunning, I loved the tree in the foreground made with acrylic paint, and I liked how all the colors here were managed to blend together to create a fabulous sunset. Here are the materials I need for testing. I got my spray paint, just the old ones I already had, a box to use. Now what I have to do is take the box and cut it on all four sides in order to make sure I have a flat piece to do my testing on. I decided to use a box because I didn't want to ruin a perfectly good canvas for this. I then had cups, plates, pieces of loose leaf paper, and of course my soda can for emotional support. I started with the two cans of spray paint shaking them up. I start with a coat of red, just a nice stripe, and then black to try to blend them together. However, they didn't blend together so well, so I decided to try more red. Then that didn't work. So I added more black. And more red. So that wasn't going so well, so I decided just to make the entire thing red to try something new. I crumpled up a piece of paper over and over again in, t in order to create nice creases in crumpled lines to create a texture. Did anyone else do this in fourth grade? Crumpling and uncrumpling paper? Our teacher yelled at us a lot for this. So after crumpling and uncrumpling, I pressed it and stamped it against the wet paint, that picking it up to reveal the black left underneath the red paint. I did this over and over again to put the texture all along the bottom and into the middle. It worked okay, but the, with the colors of red and black, you couldn't see it super well because the colors are both dark. Then to try something new, I put, a pl I put the cup down and a brick on top. I then took the black spray paint and spray painted all around it. The cup protects a section of the red, so when it's removed, you'll see the red circle. I kept spray painting black to make sure I got an even coat. Then took the brick off and lifted the cup to reveal a red circle. I really like this. I think I use this in my real painting. So I then went in and took the... Uh, paper and tried to add more texture to it just to give it a pop. I then took off a piece of cardboard into a strip. Then I laid it down with red spray paint and then made little lines. I repeated it over and over again next to each other to create a gradient into another gradient. This effect was my favorite yet. I decided this would work really well for mountains. I did this on the, uh, by the red circle on top of the black. You couldn't see it so well when it got red over red. Then I took a ripped off piece of paper in sort of a mountain shape and spray painted black over it. This left another the background shadows for the mountains. I did it here again with red spray paint to add some more red back into the mix. <laughs> Alright, and now that I've put my camera on a music stand, because my tripod does not ro rotate a full 90 degrees to hold my camera securely, we are doing the more dangerous method with a music stand and a camera poking through one of the holes. Safety!
So what I've decided on doing is I want to do kind of a moon and mountains effect. So we'll do the moon in the technique I showed earlier, which we had talked about, with the circle and stuff behind it, made by a cup being placed over it, or possibly a plate depending on the size of my canvas, uh, and then spray painting over the entire image. So, uh, the, for the mountains, one of the techniques I also showed was how I used a loose square of cardboard and spray painted, and it, as it got thinner and thinner on this way, I then moved the square to over here and spray painted, which left a cool, thick, the thin, and then thick, and the thin. So, we'll probably do a couple of those over here to create the, the gradients and the base for the mountains. After that, I'm gonna take a ripped off piece of paper and place it over here, and then spray paint a color on top. And then that'll leave just the outline over there. Watch everyone here still be extremely confused on what on earth I am talking about. <laughs> but I promise, you guys will see. Color schemes. I'm just thinking a blue, green, sea foam, and then some white acrylic paint to add some speckles. So, hopefully you guys understand somewhat what am I am talking about, but next stop, Michaels. And so you need a canvas, spray paint, and that's it. I've ducked into this aisle of who knows what. What is glow in the dark spray paint? Must resist all temptations. Okay, we need a blue. Dark blue? Well, here's dark blue. Probably that one. Good enough. My other one's a gloss, so I'm gonna get a gloss. This one, that one's satin, close enough. What do you think, guys? Should we get glitter green? So I think we're gonna go with you. It looks like they move the acrylic paint. You need acrylic paint? I think they got it. Unlike my last one, I want it to be one solid piece and not for separate. That one's probably too long. 16 by 20, that's not bad. Is this too big? I don't know. Compared to my face. 12 by 16. Is this one a better size? Seems like a good size. 14 by 18. Into the cart you go. All right, so looks like I'm ready to go. I have my rocks to hold things down. My acrylic paint for stars, my canvas, my spray paints, my plate, uh, and of course my journal with my sketch thing and other pieces of paper to use for text writing. So let's start! So I think we're going to start with the moon over here. Starting with the green and shaking it up with some light mists. And I like that color. I think it's pretty good. Going along with it. I think it needs some more green, definitely. Some more sea foam to get a little closer in to define it a bit better. So to add a bit more contrast. Now we're gonna add a little bit of highlights. Now that we got that done, we're gonna wait and let it dry. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are pretty close to dry, so I'm gonna just go with that. So now that we have that part done, you know, it was a real challenge here, not getting all the grass in there. Probably the most difficult part. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my plate and put it right on top. Then taking a brick and putting it right on top too, just so I don't get uh, schmutz everywhere. Now I'm gonna take the blue, very excited, cover about to, about to there, this, and making sure it's very, getting right up to the edges there, because the plate will protect. And we want a very crisp change. So pretty high up for that, just so it's very light parts, very light spritzes. And then the fun part, we're gonna go ahead and squeeze here and put it straight onto the brush. 
right there. That or tap the brush on your hand. That's probably the best technique, tapping on your hand. So see, then you get the stars on there. And you're gonna need some more paint, some more tapping. Take the brick off. And we're gonna reveal there. See the beautiful moon left over. So now we're gonna work on the mountain part. We're gonna use sea foam, the seafoam color and do the little gradient parts. Again, and the crisp line, crisp line as it fades out. Then we have that part. And see how it's all coming together now? Just taking a piece of loose leaf paper and ripping and tearing in all jagged motions. Place it down. Adding it right there. There we go, I think that's the finished product right there. Well, I'm gonna let this dry and then I'll see you upstairs for the outro. Bye. All right, well, that's the end of it. Thank you so much for coming on this adventure with me. I loved having you. Here we have the final product, which I think turned out pretty cool. So if you like my art and stuff, you can go ahead and follow my art account. It's called Rainbow of Art. I'll leave the link below. Along with my main Instagram account, Vera Can't Spell, my Twitter, my Snapchat, all that jazz if you'd like to follow me, which would be much appreciated. If you like this video, please let me know. Let me know if you think Behind the Art would be a cool series to have on this channel, or if you just want me to go back to my regular rant comedy. I really love hearing your guys' opinion because nothing makes me happier than people genuinely enjoying my videos and getting to make content that people like and actually enjoy. So if you want more rants, let me know if you want more rants. If you want uh, me to continue with Behind the Art, let me know that too. Or if there's a whole new series you'd think I, you'd like me to have, let me know. You can comment below, like the video, or DM me on one of my accounts. Thank you for watching and I will see you all later. Goodbye.